shut up, Paul. You do talk some amount of crap and no one cares. That was only a small selection of put-downs I've endured at my time at St Thomas Aquinas. And even then, only from a former English teacher. I'm getting this impression that people find me irritating and annoying. In fact, annoying is an understatement. Annoying is some speck on a distant horizon and from where I am, I can't even see that horizon. Although some of my detractors, again, my former English teacher, would argue I'm too conceited to be reflective. I am, nevertheless, quite prepared to examine my own behaviour and my classmates' reactions to it, and learn. What I have learned is that I am surprisingly sensitive, and that they are unsurprisingly oversensitive. I will admit that occasionally I sing more in phrases, and I am quite a good singer, but surely that's better than being self-deprecating. After much reflection, I simply cannot understand what other people object to. For example, there's a girl in my year, one of the more flamboyant and fashion conscious of my peers, who called me annoying as I commented on her hair, but I say people need to allow to take a joke. She knows what type of person I am, it's her fault for wearing a big puffy yellow jacket which, when seen with her hairstyle, makes her look like a banana. La the laughter that accompanied my comment suggested I was not alone in seeing the girl's football potential. I like to make people laugh. It's one of my more endearing qualities. I will only do so, however, should the opportunity present itself. And yes, please note the correct placement of however in the middle and not the beginning of the sentence. Right, okay. You found me out. I'm a pedant. Don't judge me. I can't help it if I like to make sure my words are in the right place and commas are used when they should be and aren't when they shouldn't. I can understand why my friends may feel that pulling out a ballpoint pen and scribbling furiously when I see a sign saying Science Kits 599 with kit spelt K-I-T apostrophe S is a little excessive. But English is a beautiful language. How they cannot agree I do not know. I'm doing a service when I correct their speech. Amar is not a proper sentence. Someone I did seem to annoy last year was a girl who was in my modern studies class, whom we shall call J, for I deem that sufficiently ambiguous. She must have been telepathic or something, because sometimes I didn't even have to say anything to annoy her. My being there did it. One day during computing she turned up late for class, as was often the case, and when the teacher asked why, she said, it's not my fault, my taxi was late so I had to get the number for a bus but it was late too so don't say it was my fault because it wasn't okay. I've tried to write it and say it as it sounded but I'm not a professional. After hearing this and quietly chuckling, I simply commented that while I appreciated her efforts to save the planet by economising on the number of breaths taken, she was still expelling the same amount of hot air. And not because of that, I was nearly put in intensive care for two weeks. I mean, it was just a joke after all. Although, now that I think about it, if making jokes about people makes them hate you, then the girl I sat beside last year in chemistry must really loathe me. In my defence, if she gets drunk at charity concerts and decides to boogie on down, and if she goes to her son's bed and stays there for 20 minutes, gets burnt, and then is stupid enough to tell me, especially when she knows me well enough, then she's fair game. She's bought, brought it upon herself. To make sure that I considered other people's opinions, I undertook some research while engaging in this small reflection. My survey showed that 65% of the respondents believed that I thought I was always right. I don't think I'm always right. I'm usually right. For example, you may think that the Earth only has one moon. But I know it's got four, maybe five. See, you can use that at lunch. Perhaps they mean I always correct them. Which I admit may be annoying, but it all comes down to that pedantry thing. To take another example from that mistress of the English language, Madam J. Things is more funner when you are drunk. I mean, oh, my stress levels rise just thinking about it. So imagine how I felt hearing it. So many grammar rules broken in so few words. How these people sleep at night, I don't know. It is clear that the only reason I'm annoying is because I've been so severely provoked. So, on reflection, 
I'm not annoying. Despite what quick-speaking girls and girls who dress up as exotic fruits or girls who burn their buttocks in a sunbed may say, and despite what is said by those who do not fully appreciate the English language, grammar rules et al, and believe it is acceptable to fling comments about willy-nilly, I am not annoying. Others are just too easily annoyed. <laughs>